everyone. This is the uh, rain barrel I've been making uh, over the past couple of weeks, just on and off making. Um, I'm in the spray painting process, that's why it's on a board right now. Uh, just making it a nicer green instead of the uh, more intense blue on the on the uh, actual barrel itself. Um, the barrel itself is just a standard 55 gallon uh, safe food storage barrel that you can find uh, on, on Craigslist. I found mine. Uh, I, I pay $25. I've seen them as low as 20 though. Uh, the basic system is to have on the top uh, an inlet port somewhere. I drilled a couple of small holes. I noticed as a testing purpose I was just dr drilling a few holes on the top first to see how fast stuff would uh, collect but I noticed that even with these the smaller holes I drilled at the top water builds up very quickly inside this barrel and it's usually full within a within a couple of hours of just general rainfall uh, most people uh, drill a hole on the side of the barrel, maybe further up from the bottom. I want to take advantage of the uh, the bung hole on the bottom. Uh, this this bung hole can screw out and everything, but on the uh, inside, the very center of the bung hole, there's a uh, threaded three fourths inch hole. Um, it's not open when you you have to drill into it. Um, three fourths inch drill bit goes right through it makes a very nice hole then you uh, you know get together various pieces of uh, PVC and build yourself a, a spout I went to uh, Home Depot and uh, just started fitting pieces together I brought the bunk hole along with me so I could get a nice fit and then from there I assembled different various pieces of uh, you know PVC together until I found something just kinda like this most of it was 3 fourths inch um, couples, coupling and stuff any of the uh, straight pieces like here would be um, three fourths inch um, piping. Uh, let's get a different angle on this. As you can see, yeah, I'm just been painting it now, but uh, it's all standard white PVC um, with a standard sp spigot type mechanism here. It works very well. The water pressure is great. Uh, I've had it filled a couple of times just to try out water pressure, but this is when I was uh, painting for the most part. I constructed this base out of random brick I had laying around. I know I wanted to get it tall enough off the ground where I could get a watering can underneath the uh, spigot. So it had to be fairly tall. As you can see, it's four, five, six bricks tall. Um, I basically just made it so the, the rim of the barrel would be on the outside of all these bricks so I wouldn't have to make a center brick piece. Um, these bricks are interlaced, so you know it's a little bit more sturdier. Um, and I'd recommend doing this unless you're going to be moving some of the stuff around uh, on a very uh, level surface. You wouldn't want the barrel be tipping over. It's going to be, well, I don't know, eight pounds per every gallon of water. So roughly about 55, 50 gallons of water. You know, it's going to weigh about 400 pounds. So that's going to be a lot of weight. So you got to make sure you're using something sturdy, brick cinder block, uh, wood structures I've seen. Um, well, I'm going to cut the video here and I'll show you what the barrel looks like on top of these uh, of this brick structure. Alright, so I've put the barrel on its base. As you can see, it's a, it's a fairly tall structure. Uh, I'm about 5'10", 5'11", and uh, you know, that, that's about eye level. It's, pre it's pretty tall. Um, but you definitely want the secure base because, like I said, this thing does weigh a ton when it's full. So as you can see, I basically built it up where it had enough clearance that the spigot could come out. And with enough uh, clearance so the spigot head could reach the, what do you call it, uh, watering can. Uh, if you don't need it to be that high or you're running maybe a soaker hose off of this, it probably doesn't need to be as high. Uh, I just had specifications I need to build this to, so this is why it's that high. And as you can see, up here, I've got my holes built. And the other piece you are going to be needing in this, unless you already have, which I had this laying around, is a flexi piece of gutter, extender, whatever you want to call it. 
basically I just ran this where it's my standard white one was. I took some of the screws out that were in there, um, ran it down, shaped it to the way I wanted, and I know when the water starts coming down, it falls under this and basically drains into there. Um, the other thing that I was didn't know how I was going to do it, but I figured it out, is uh, just using a bit of screen, standard uh, window screen. And I knew I wanted to use thumbtacks to uh, keep it down, um, but the thumbtacks weren't, weren't powerful enough to get through this plastic. It's, it's pretty dense uh, plastic. It's about a quarter inch thick on the bottom, I know that. Uh, but I needed the screen to keep mosquitoes out, keep debris out, keep whatever out. And that's almost a must because if mosquito season starts coming around here, uh, this is going to be a breeding zone for mosquitoes if you don't keep them out. So basically what I did was scavenge the yard for a couple of rocks. The rocks on the edges of the screen, making sure that the holes weren't blocked up but the screen would stay down. And basically had an effective uh, screen screening material so none of this, whatever this kind of stuff is, wouldn't get in there. Um, a lot of the, uh, not even sure if it's rock or pebbles that come on the uh, the actual shingles of the house, a lot of, you can see a lot of the uh, almost sand like particles, a little bit thicker than sand like particles would come down the uh, spout and uh, every once in a while you'll have to clean off the uh, the grate, which is pretty easy, just take the rocks off, flick around the uh, screen, and you're pretty much set to go. Uh, all that's really left now, as you can see, is the overflow port, which uh, I'm just waiting for some of the other parts to dry, and I'll be putting the uh, thing will which will come out and draw any of the excess water um, farther away from the foundation, so we're not getting a uh, leaky basement. Um, as for that, I'm going to have to wait for another day, I guess, um, when it's a bit rainy, and I'll show you guys the uh, water pressure of this thing. It's pretty good. All right. When you're constructing the rain barrel, make sure you've uh, included in your designs an overflow port so all the water's not coming back out the top regions, because uh, that's just bad, and it'll just drain down the back. Uh, I've found that the only uh, bit I really needed, the drill bit, is a uh, 3 4 inch uh, spade bit. It makes cutting through this plastic very easy. It's uh, great to go through uh, any of the various PVC pieces. Uh, this overflow port, as you can see here, that's just the couple part, but it's going to go uh, in like this, and at the very end it's a, uh, like a 90 degree angle piece. Uh, it should just uh, bring the water farther away from the house so you're not getting uh, water near the foundation, which can result in what we have is a flooded basement, usually, in the spring, spring times. Um, a 3 4 inch bit, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be used to uh, drill through a hole in the bottom of this, or top of this bung hole, uh, to get the water to actually come through the PVC and out. I just wanted to show a little bit more on the overflow port. Uh, it might not seem too intuitive what I'm talking about here. But basically I've drilled a 3 4 inch hole using a standard spade bit. Uh, it, it goes pretty easily, this, the bit makes it very easy. Um, and then I take this uh, coupling piece which just basically goes right in. Um, I was a little skeptical at first of how easy it was, but uh, sorry for the plane. Uh, but to start it off you just kind of make it go into the hole and start trying to thread it. Difficult one handed, but as you can see, it does start to go in. 